Yeah, obviously uh, it's a great initiative by the club we sort of introduced last last year. Come down to Ligon Street. I, uh, I know a few of the boys like to get down here and uh, have a feed. So it's just really good uh, membership drive for us. We're hoping to get 50,000 plus this year. Uh, it's going well so far. We've just tipped over 30,000. So this is another part we the boys love giving back to a bit of Ligon Street. And um, yeah, they're looking forward to it. Yeah, so we just walk, basically just walk around and and uh, give out some flyers and sort of just give back to some of the locals around here. Obviously, uh, Ligon Street in the heart of Carlton. And, uh, yeah, it's just sort of a good initiative and the boys really get a buzz out of it and, and some of the boys know a few of the owners down here, so sort of go in and most of the younger boys just want a free coffee out of it, so it works out well for them. A lot of talk at the moment about the, the leadership group and exactly what's going to happen there. What, what's your thoughts on the, on the captaincy and where that decision goes? Yeah, obviously the uh, three boys are in, in contention and sort of, uh, as far as I'm aware, that they're just going to be given a game each in the NAB Cup and, and see where it goes from there. Uh, all three of them have got very good experience with games and leadership and I'm sure the club will make the right decision in who they choose. You're leaning towards one over the other? Uh, no, I'm not personally because they're, they're, three of them are pretty much all going to be doing a really good job at being the, uh, the captain and yeah, it'll be basically the uh, coach and the, and the board's decision in the end and whatever they do, we'll, we'll have the support of the other uh, whole playing group. Uh, most of the boys, the, the different leadership qualities, it's like in any workforce, some blokes are better at voice, some blokes are better at uh, training, so yeah, and that's all the thing that sort of gets taken into consideration and, and yeah, like I said, the, the coaches are keeping a pretty keen eye on it and then we'll go to the board and then and they'll make the final decision. He's obviously, yeah, knows that he's, he's done the wrong thing by the club, but he's, uh, he knows that he's gonna lost a little bit of respect, but he's a uh, good thing about Robbo, he's a massive, really good trainer, and uh, we know that he'll, he'll come out in a positive attitude, and, and he's so uh, critical to the team, and we don't like that it's happened, but we've moved on now, and, and so has he. How hard is it as an AFL player, not talking about Michigan City, but just in general, he goes out to the big day out like a lot of players do. You know, what's your knowledge of the situation? Was he targeted, and does it happen? Do you guys sometimes get targeted and really have to know how to handle situations like that? Uh, personally, I've I've never really had it, um, so I can't speak on um, behalf of myself. But it's just putting yourself in the right situations, and and obviously big day out, it's a big big day, and there's a lot of people who sort of get on the drink and. And you just, if you find yourself in a, in a situation that's getting a little bit out of control, you just get yourself out of there and, and sort of don't, yeah, you don't want anything sort of like things like that, that happen on the weekend to happen. Is there much said from within the club about the risks of even attending oh, events like this? Uh, not, not really, but, but everyone sort of knows that players are high profiled and, and especially when you're in big groups, it's, you're sort of targeted even more. Not targeted, but you know, people know that, that you're there. So, like I said, it's just, about keeping your composure and if it, in sticky situations, just getting yourself out of there. Just obviously from the club perspective, it's, it's very disappointing that he put himself in that situation. But like I said, we've moved on now and, and so is he and, and he's just looking forward to sort of giving back to a little bit today to the members and trying to get that respect back from, from not just the players but the community as well. It's a pretty big meeting at Eddie Had Car tomorrow, it's the AFL Drug Summit. Do you reckon there's an increasing growing culture of drugs in the AFL, just from what you see? Uh, from what I see, I don't see any of it. So, um, yeah, I don't... Listen, I I'm, I could be, I wouldn't mind if I got tested every day of the week because I, I don't do it. So it doesn't really, in a sense, if they want to do more tests, then that's good because I've got full confidence that, especially at Carlton, that, that we don't have a drug culture here and... And I would be very surprised if blokes are professional athletes putting their, their careers at risk by doing drugs and doing stupid things like that. So personally, yeah, I, if I got tested every day, it would annoy me, but it wouldn't bother me because I don't do drugs, so I'm not real pleased about that part of it. No, I think our system's very good. We've, it's, the players chose to have this system in place, and it's the best drug system in the world, and there's a lot of sports out there that, that don't get drug tests in the off-season. And, and as a playing group, we decided that as a whole that we would be tested in off-season to prove to people that, that we're not a drug culture uh, sport. But at the end of the day, that we're, we're happy with the way it's been and, and 
going forward if it changes. And we have full, full, um, we're full supporting the AFL and the, and the PA. What do you make of the concern surrounding the, the loop, so-called loophole in the three strike system where uh, drug users are able to report their own use and therefore go undetected or unstruck? Well, if there's any little loopholes, I'm sure having the, the summit tomorrow that that if they think it's a big enough issue, then it'll be changed. But at the end of the day, it's up to the AFLPA and the AFL to see if they want to make any any changes to the system. And I'm sure tomorrow there'll be an outcome about that. I think it is because obviously, uh, like you said, we're, we're high profiled and people people look out for you. And yeah, if you want to risk your AFL career, then go ahead, do it every weekend. But it's not something I would ever do. And, and I would be very upset if our players were out there every weekend getting on the drugs. Because, yeah, it's, alcohol is bad enough, but then mixing drugs, you, you, uh, senses are a bit all over the joint, um, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't be risking it. Well, I've got no issue with the system at the moment, um, but I'm sure the AFL and the, and the AFLPA will, will talk about that tomorrow, and, and whatever decision they get to, we'll have the full support of the uh, playing group. Just back on the, just, just back on the cap, so you, um, can you just identify just the strengths of each candidate and why they would oh, a good choice? Could, could go on all day about the strengths, and but like I said, Murph took over last year for a little bit and he was fantastic. Simo with his just the way his on-field presence is, and um, and Carazzo, his, his voice and his on on field leadership as well. It's it's basically yeah, whoever they choose is going to be the right right choice, but. Um, like I said, it's it's a yeah it's a three horse race at the moment, obviously. Yeah, sort of trying to stay fit. It's the first time I've uh, done a lot of the pre Christmas training in about four or five years, so it just holds you in good stead for that full season. And really looking forward to sort of playing some some uh, longer periods of football. It's been very frustrating for myself and obviously the club as well. So just looking forward to being out there again.